Okay, if you're going to be wearing a tuxedo, there are some key decisions you have to make when it comes to a few specific styling details. These are important to pay attention to because these details have a huge effect on the look, feel, and overall vibe of your tuxedo. So in this video, I'm going to explain 10 specific tuxedo details. I'll introduce you to the terms you need to know, lay out the various options you have, talk about why you might choose one of those options over the other, and give you some things to always look for, as well as some things to avoid. We're going to quickly make you an expert here so you can make choices that best represent your personality and your personal style, and the result is that you will not only look great in your tux, but that you will feel comfortable and confident as well. We're gonna start off with the tuxedo jacket, and the first thing to consider is the style of the lapel. The lapel is the most distinguishing feature of a tuxedo, and there are three different lapel styles. A notch lapel, a peaked lapel, and a shawl lapel. A peaked lapel extends upwards and forms a peak that points towards the shoulders, thus the name peaked lapel. This is going to be the most classic and timeless choice for a tuxedo jacket, never a bad option. A shawl lapel has a rounded shape, and while it still has the same level of elegance and formality as a peaked lapel, I would say that there is a little bit of a relaxed sophistication to a shawl lapel. So if you want that sort of casually elegant vibe, a shawl lapel is a great choice. A notch lapel is fairly uncommon for modern tuxedos. It is one of the most common and versatile lapel styles for suit jackets, but for my taste, it doesn't quite match the level of formality and elegance of a tuxedo, so it's not an option that I would recommend. Detail number two is the lapel fabric. So you've got two options here satin or grosgrain. A satin lapel is going to have a smooth and shiny appearance. A grosgrain lapel is slightly ribbed, so it has a textured and less shiny appearance. Both of these lapel fabric options are extremely classic, so there is no wrong choice here. However, if you opt for a shawl collar, you're going to want to choose a satin lapel. Detail number three is the lapel width. The width of your lapel should be proportional to two things, the width of your body, and the width of your face. So if you're a broader guy, the lapel should be wider. If you're a narrower guy, the lapel should be slimmer. This is extremely important because for a tuxedo to look perfect, everything needs to be balanced and nothing can throw off that balance more than a lapel that's the wrong size. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is to wear a jacket with a lapel that is too narrow. So generally speaking, the safe zone for a proper lapel width is three and a half to four inches for a peak lapel and three to three and a half inches for a shawl lapel. Detail number four is deciding between a single-breasted jacket or a double-breasted jacket. Single-breasted jacket is going to be your most classic, traditional, and conservative choice, going to look good no matter what. A double-breasted jacket with its overlapping fabric and two sets of buttons is also very classic, though it definitely has a more formal appearance. Ultimately, the choice comes down to your personal preference, your personal style, and most importantly, your personal comfort zone. If you've never worn a double-breasted jacket before and are kind of on the fence about it, I would advise you to choose a single-breasted jacket. On your wedding day, you wanna feel comfortable and confident, and if you're doing something new and outside of your comfort zone, that's going to affect how you carry yourself. Detail number five is the pocket style. Now there is only one acceptable pocket style for a tuxedo, and that is a jetted pocket. A jetted pocket is just a very simple and clean line as opposed to the flat pocket or the patch pocket. And the jetted pocket's trim should match the fabric of the lapel. Detail number six, the buttons, or I should say the button. So while most suits will have two buttons, sometimes three, a single-breasted tuxedo has only one button and a double-breasted tuxedo with a peak lapel, four or six buttons, a shawl lapel, two or four buttons. And once again, just like the trim around the pocket, the buttons facing or the fabric that's around the button should match the fabric of the lapel. Detail number seven is the jacket vent. A vent refers to the opening on the bottom back of the jacket, and you've got three options for jacket vents. No vent, a single vent, or a double vent. A jacket with no vent is going to be the most traditional and old school option. A single vent, meaning just a single slit in the center, is pretty uncommon for a tuxedo jacket and not what I would recommend. And a double vent, where you've got openings on both sides, is the most modern and updated choice. So if you want that classic, 
old school kind of vibe, I would go with no vent. But if you consider your style to be classic with a modern sensibility, I would choose a double vent. Now we're gonna move on to the pants and detail number eight, side adjusters. Tuxedo pants do not have belt loops. And if your tuxedo pants do have belt loops, they're not tuxedo pants. In order to keep that simple and elegant look, tuxedo pants have side adjusters. You use the side adjusters to make fine adjustments to the waist size by either loosening or tightening them. Detail number nine is the fabric stripe down the side of the pants. Again, if your tuxedo pants don't have this feature, they're not tuxedo pants. And just like the pocket trim and button facing, the fabric of the stripe should match the fabric of the lapel. And finally, detail number 10 is the bottom finishing. Tuxedo pants should always have a plain bottom. The clean line matches the simplicity and elegance of the tuxedo, and it's the most formal way to finish the bottom of the pants. So there you have it. Those are the 10 specific styling details that you need to consider when it comes to choosing your tux. Understanding these and paying attention to them will really help you nail the style that you're going for, resulting in you both looking great and feeling great. We're gonna be diving into some of the other individual components of a complete tuxedo look next, and if you have any questions about these details, let me know.